No, I did that. Oh, okay, oh, okay good. <laughs> so, um, when when well, last we left, you guys had just finished um, a rather challenging fight while Gov, one of the demon lieutenants, sat comfortably on his throne, um, amused by it all. And we pretty much stopped right when combat ended. Um, you will hear, as the room starts to quiet down as combat ends, clapping as Gov, with a rather pleased look on his face, is applauding your group's actions. And he says, well done, I am fairly impressed. I do have to ask, though, what's the whole... And he points to Cole, who now looks like a toad demon, and then points to Sky, who now looks like a giant troll demon. What's this? You know, if God can't remember the answer that Jared gave him last week, Jared's not going to help him again. <laughs> LOL, LOL. <laughs> well, no, he, 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 he will go on to say, I understand that it's some sort of magic, but I've never seen something that is so impressive. Would this withstand if I touched you? <laughs> Who is he pointing uh, to at this? <laughs> uh, he's just kind of talking to all of you. Would it... Keen doesn't understand how this magic works, so shrug. <laughs> uh, I, it's just an illusion. Finn yes. will kind of like wave her arms around, wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. Yes, but an incredibly convincing illusion to ter to trick me. And illusions can be physical. He'll stand up, and when he stands up, you'll see that he's a good 11 feet tall. Um, he's about the size... Actually, a good way to think of it is... You all remember the movie Avatar? Yeah. No. He kind of looks like one of them people. He's very tall. <laughs> he's got the bluish skin. Uh, he's, like I said, about 11 feet tall. And he'll go walk over to Finn... And in her wraith form, and he will reach out with a finger to touch Finn's skull-like forehead. Will Finn stop or do anything? No, Finn's just standing there, and she'll wait. You see that see from your appearance, Finn, his finger touches above your head. It's almost to what you see. He's touching above where you where your your head is. Mm -hmm. To everyone else, it looks like he's touching the very forehead of the wraith and he touches it and backs up and goes that's impressive mm -hmm. hmm I'm sorry where are my manners I believe we had a deal you wanted an audience with me and he says as he goes back to the seat yes yes uh, if uh, now that you have time and kind of motions to the destroyed room, <laughs> for lack of a better term. Yes, I would seem to have uh, had my schedule cleared for me. Hmm. Excellent! So, uh, who wants to get this ball rolling, Finn? is <laughs> like, looking around. Jarek stares at Finn. <laughs> yeah, okay, we can hang on. So Finn looks around at the others. She starts at Jarek. Okay, that's definitely not going to happen. Looks over at Keen. Keen, Keen stares right back at her. Looks at Pearson. <laughs> Pearson just very recently entered the room, and he's he's still in his wisp form, but he's coughing madly now, as if uh, it's that one of those horrible coughs where you can feel something or hear something rattle in their chest. And uh, he just shakes his head and brings a hand up as he gasps for air. That's enough to make Jarek wince. Ugh. She looks over at Cole. See the toad demon uh, sit there like normally, just looking at the, uh, the the demon lord, and briefly just coughs up a small amount of blood. <laughs> All right, <laughs> I guess I uh, I guess I'll be taking it from here. All right, Gov. So, uh, I can call you Gov, right? Or Mr. Gov? Gov Jr.? Do you have a name that you prefer? Sir? Well, 
I have a name that my underlings call me, though I am quite convinced by now you aren't one of them. So, Gov will suffice. Excellent, Gov. All right, so here we are. Um, we want to propose a, uh, what would you call it, what would you call it, a, um, partnership, some sort of deal here. Um, we, we, we might have an offer, uh, that, uh, that you can't refuse. And, uh, you, well, you know the, you know the saying, yeah, you scratch our back, I scratch your, wait, do they have that saying? Then, like, starts thinking to herself, is that a saying that you guys we... use? have something similar I think you're <laughs> suggesting that we form some kind of partnership yes yes like a like a little like a mini alliance like because from the sounds of it like you you, you don't work you don't work in the best environment with with your current work partners and uh, we feel like we may be able to uh, be of uh, some service to you and to us. I see. And what exactly do you know about the working environment with my partners, as you say? Finn's eyes go over to Jarek. <laughs> See if he has anything to add to the situation. What is Jarek doing? Jarek is uh, offering a, perhaps most terrifying, a genuine smile at Finn. With no intention of speaking up. <laughs> Finn looks over to Keat. To Keat. To Keen? <laughs> He's been moving over while you've been having your conversation over to Cole to possibly get his set of daggers. Uh, he is preoccupied at the moment. <laughs> She looks to Cole. Um, <laughs> Cole, knowing you just want reassurance that you're doing a good job gives you a thumbs up. <laughs> Finn looks <laughs> very... <laughs> she maybe isn't giving you the right reaction that you were expecting. <laughs> it's sort of like a blank... Face with a raised eyebrow. Okay, and then is Pearson still hacking up along? Uh, he's calmed down now. He's taking deep breaths. Okay. Uh, what was the question <laughs> that been asked? There's what? so many responses. I forgot what the original query or or the reason why she's he's, looking at us for. He's he's asking how we know about his work environment. Or what we know about, yeah. What yes. what we know what... and what what we could do to provide better. And all I really know is that just out of character, we we know that he's. Wait, what do we know again? <laughs> <laughs> well, oh here, tell you what, I'll give you the response that you're that you're wondering, and Pearson will just say two words in between his gasp gasps, and he'll say, "Freedom, respect." And then he's he's out of breath for the rest of the book. So we can provide freedom and respect. Oh, yes, interesting. Yes. And uh, how exactly do you intend to provide these things, little Wraith? Well... <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I should mention oh during every t one of these times, <laughs> Goff sits patiently. <laughs> At this point, Jarek uh, lets out a sigh and like the smile fades. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and you're the one who wanted this audience. Do you want me to talk for you? Kind of, yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> I mean, I got us this far. I mean, could use uh, some assistance, some backup from anyone if <laughs> she looks around. In that, in that when, case, <laughs> when, 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 when Finn says that, um, Gov's face actually looks disappointed. He frowns. <laughs> Jarek actually will uh, then, like, stepping closer, will uh, get next to Finn and says, He's really only interested in talking to you. Oh. Hey, M Mr. Gov, do you only want to talk to me? None of these chuckleheads? Well, 
your... Jason frowns at being called a chucklehead. <laughs> your coughing friend over there, which I wasn't aware wraiths could cough, interesting, mm -hmm. did have a point. You apparently wanted this audience. Yeah, because I thought we could all work together. Okay, here. Let's just, okay, let's, I don't want to assume anything about your work environment. Everyone, let's just all sit down. Gov, tell me, what are your concerns that you currently have with your employers? Ben... <laughs> Pearson, as a whisk, looks stupefied at this. Jerry goes back to, like, leaning against, like, in the column he was and just slowly nods to himself. He knows there's no way his intelligence can compete with that power. <laughs> <laughs> he cannot help himself from laughing. And we'll shoot Keen a dirty look. <laughs> I'm sorry. Roll Finn. Yeah. <laughs> Roll me. Smooth talking level plus smooth talking background. All right, so... Your, your level is now oh. a... Yeah, it is. Your and charisma I... modifier and your smooth talking background points. Uh, let's see. And I'm so sorry, guys. Give me like 30 seconds. I just got called away. I'll be right back. Sorry. Right. Okay. Oh, it's gonna be... It's gonna be good! Oh. Yeah, yeah, this, oh. is why, this is why Finn needs to do this, everyone. Mm. She's the she's the yes. actual talker here. <laughs> yeah. would just be like, yep. and this is why you suck. This <laughs> is more or less Kriana being like, well, I'm really fucking loopy, so let's see if anyone else can... <laughs> nope, alright, we're no, just gonna... No one else no, is going no, to. No, nope. doesn't want to talk to us. He has no idea who I am, and everyone... You've set the stage, so... All right. Loopy Kriana will have Roll to take it. the ranks on this. Okay, I, sorry. I'm, I'm excited for that. Oh, boy. Uh, <laughs> oh, wow. Hi. Nice roll. Yeah. Yeah. Um, first things first. Finn, you would know this because, well, you're very familiar with this kind of uh, attitude in the sense you see... And you've been noticing this for a while. Gav's eyes are... His face may frown in disappointment. But his eyes are those of someone who's playing um, a prank or is um, being playful, I guess is the word. Torturing someone playfully because it amuses them. Mm -hmm. uh, a prankster, in a sense. So you can see that in his eyes. And he will say, when you say that, some of the problems with your employer, he will say, he'll actually laugh. Um, and he'll say, you are a very, very odd creature. Tell me something. Who are you? Who are you really? Who am I? I, I, think, I think I introduced, I'm Finn. I'm, uh, I'm really not this creature. I am a high elf. That's not a good thing, I know, but it, uh, yeah, that's what I am. And I am here trying to save our world from some crazy shit that's going on, which you might be familiar with. I might. Yeah. <laughs> and, um, yeah. But I'm not unreasonable. Finn. High elf. He looks at you, and then he looks at everyone else, and then his eyes pause on Jarek. You're not by chance a necromancer, are you? Jarek says, oh yes, very much so. Oh, you really are. I don't always pay attention at our little get-togethers, but I know enough to know that you've been a huge thorn in Azil's side. You're the champions of this world, aren't you? Yes, we are the Stone Bears. I uh, see. Yeah, that's actually... I don't know why I didn't think to say that right away. Finn, it, like, <laughs> legitimately is, like, thinking, like, that would have just saved us a lot of trouble. <laughs> Gav uh, kind of steeples his fingers together with his elbows on his bench. He goes, I would have thought it would be because telling one of your mortal enemies such a thing might not be the smartest move. But you seem to be approaching this from a very new 
angle. I must say, I've never had champions come up to me before requesting to talk to me. Kill me, certainly, but talk to me. This is new. Yeah, I would use the term champions very loosely when it comes to us. Uh, yeah. Tears and spits. <laughs> <laughs> Finn kind of glances back hearing a... <laughs> Gov looks at Pearson and says, Oh no, it's not just a little patooey, it's a hacking, phlegmy oh. film. Mm -hmm. he, mm -hmm. he, he looks at that and then he says, Point taken. Mm -hmm. So, you've broken into my fortress here yes. in an attempt to talk to me because you want to cure my woes. A noble effort. Actually, wait. Considering that I'm one of your mortal enemies, I'm not sure I would call that a noble effort. In fact, I'd half call that a insane effort, but amusing nonetheless. Let's say you could. What are you seeking in return? Why are you here? Well, we need to get to Whitebridge. And our approach is mostly kind of going with the theme with, you know, trickstering and sort of taking a more playful approach because, I mean, right? This is all just a big game. So we decided that instead of being pawns, we'll just play it. When you say this is all a big game, his eyes lose their mirth. And he says, that's a very apt way to describe it. So you want to take down a zeal. I suppose that is what champions are for in this game, as you call it. <sighs> I can't imagine you would ever be successful, but you could be successful enough. Maybe. Maybe we could work. Maybe not work together, but maybe we could mutually benefit each other. I'll be honest with you. I don't think you have a shot in eternity of actually making it before Zeal and defeating him, but that's neither my place nor my concern. Mm -hmm. You have proven that you are resourceful, powerful, and surprising. You might just be strong enough. You were right when you said that my working relationship is strained. I am only part of this merry band of oh, shall we call them adventurers? Because I have no choice in the matter. You may have heard before that I cannot die. Mm -hmm. It is quite true, remarkably, and there is a reason for it. Mm-hmm. First, I... I think we should come to an agreement before I explain too much. I will help you get into Whitebridge. I will give you what information I feel is safe to give you for my own neck to help you accomplish your goals, which is quite substantial, I'm sure, more than you have at the moment. And I will even grant you... Oh, maybe I... Well... Hmm. Hmm? I'm considering, but I want to help you. I will teleport you to Whitebridge. Find a way to even grant you access to my stronghold, which you might be able to use. And if I am to understand correctly, these knives that you use somehow disguise you. I see that there are two of you still left to be disguised. I can provide suitable hosts for you. Okay. In return, I need you to free me from Azil's grasp by breaking into Nye's stronghold and destroying his, my phylactery. Oh, yeah, we could totally do that, Finn says, cracking her knuckles. Oh, Jared yeah. Blinks oh, yeah. a few times and then, like, lowly. Uh... We owe that son of a bitch. <laughs> 
so hard. We would love to do this. He's Jarek, a little dwarf, isn't he? Jarek yeah. has an I get it expression on his face now. <laughs> Pearson croaks out one other thing on our part that we request in exchange for this favor. You need to tell us everything you know about Nye. I will tell you a lot. I will not tell you everything, and there are good reasons for it. Well, start naming them. If you get into the town, if you break into Nye's stronghold, and if you know every trick that he has, every ounce of knowledge that I know about him, and you fail, which is quite likely, guess who they'll come asking? Why did the champions know all of these things? I will tell you, as I said, much more than you know now, and a good deal, I promise. But I'm not going to give you the keys to his front door. You're supposed to be heroes. Adapt. I can accept that answer. Then why bother helping us at all? At any chance, we'll get caught. They'll ask questions as to how did we end up in Whitebridge, so on and so forth. Are you playing a risk already? <laughs> Not much of one. What are you going to do? Go get captured, tell them that I teleported you into the city? Mm, even if they did believe you, I've done mischievous things in the past. I could simply tell them that I was delivering them you hand-wrapped for them to slaughter. And if anything, it's their fault for not doing it so quickly. I have been doing this a long time. Accept my terms or don't. Finn looks at everyone else. <laughs> Jarek is busy having a self-conversation now. Like, he's like, I've all rolled up in his head, and he's... Uh, <laughs> his worried glance is like, has anyone else, anyone else seen this? <laughs> she'll, she'll look around and make eye contact with everyone and be like, well, do we have... Do you guys have any better ideas? Pearson shakes his head. No, he starts staking up forward, and he says, You know, White and Red Bridge might not be my home anymore, at least for now. But we still had a saying, which is, There's no such thing as a good... Uh, it, wait. No, the saying is, if it's too good to be true, then it's a lie. And Pearson's going to stare deep into Gab's eyes and use one of the two remaining mind reads that he has. I want to find out if this guy actually means what he says or if this is a fucking trap. Oh, okay. You peer into his mind and the first thing that hits you well, like a, like a, like a truck is a desperate sense of hope. Mm -hmm. A very genuine sense of hope that very much belies the outer demeanor of Gov. You also get an image of dying over and over and over. His mind is filled with death. You don't see who kills you. You don't even know exactly how you die. You simply have the memory from his viewpoint of dying this way or that way or um, through going to sleep, through being obliterated, through not existing anymore. Just a thousand different deaths, so much so they blur together. And you get an overwhelming sense of annoyance and frustration. Okay. Pearson? The, but that's it? That's all I get? Well, well, let me ask you, you, you. You said that you were looking into it specifically looking for... If he, he, was, he was trying to lure us into a trap. Yeah, then you don't see that at all. What you see is... Um, uh, you, you, you can very much tell that he is genuine in his offer, what he has promised. 
Oh, okay. All right. Uh, can, yeah. Uh, uh, you 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 hear? What? What did you just do to me? What? Kirsten gives a bit of a smile. You keep your secrets out about Nye. I'll keep my secrets about how I f did that. I've seen you die thousands of times. I felt your frustrations, and I felt your hope. We are your best shot. Probably the best shot you're ever going to get. The more you help us, the more likely you'll be free. And then he'll take a staggered s step back. And... Uh, lean an arm on, although Finn is not the sturdiest uh, creature on, you know, the god's green earth, uh, he, she she will suffice for him to uh, regain his balance. Finn will, will offer an arm and, and help a Pearson. The rest of you see a very odd scene <laughs> of two flame ghost-like wraiths trying to lean upon each other, <laughs> but they don't mm -hmm. quite match up. It's it's like something out of like a romance thing, I'm yeah. sure. <laughs> yeah, yeah. The cover of the next uh, yeah. Harlequin novel. Someone yeah. just needs a long blonde wig to be Fabio. Yeah. Hmm. You should be Fabio, Cream. Gov. <laughs> yeah. Anywho. Gov frowns at Pearson for quite some time, and he says, "Very well. If it helps you in your decision." I am not planning to withhold much except the very details of their strongholds and perhaps weaknesses that would lead questions. I can give you all kinds of information about what to expect in general and what to look out for. I can also tell you how to get in front of Azil himself if you are that lucky or skilled. Well, I don't need convincing Finn, like, is looking around. She looks at Pearson. Pearson just gives a little nod and a gesture of a hand, which simply says, go on. First, we make an agreement. Yes. He noted it earlier, Finn. He oh, did he? wants his phylactery destroyed. Oh, yeah, I thought I agreed to that. Finn <laughs> is like glancing at Jarek and looking back up at you. Bob. You, you, you did, but uh, then oh. you may have oh. looked at us and then. Oh, that's right. I wanted to. I didn't want to make a. I, sorry, I. Finn looks up at Gov and like genuinely like sorry. I, I had to, you know, run it by everyone else. Before I get into anything, can you relinquish the information of what a phylactery is? Jerk says, oh, I can, I can answer that. Like, raises his hand, <laughs> like, waving at Cole. I can talk about that uh, after we're done here. We can do that. I trust you. <laughs> he turns. <laughs> Jerk so... laughing in his mind. <laughs> Gov, Gov will nod and he'll say, well, then that will save me some time. Suffice to say that there is no such thing as an immortal being without treachery. There is a pos an item called a phylactery that Nye has in his possession, which contains my mortal soul. This body can be killed infinitely. As long as that phylactery exists, I will remain. And because they hold it, they hold me. I want you to destroy the phylactery so that I may be free of his thumb. So what does this look like? Good question. Good question, Finn is like clapping her hands at Keen. Gov again steeples his fingers again and says, a remarkably simple item for what it contains. It looks as a small... Well, for my hands, perhaps medium size for your hands, crystal vial filled with my blood. Hmm. As I said, rather simple for what it actually is. So about, about 
this big, and he's going to make like uh, a, about a foot in between his hands. About, about this big. About yes. And okay. Nye has access to this phylactery. Nye is the one who made it. Yeah, that sounds like ah. something you need to do. He's a real what an asshole. He yeah. is by far the most useful of Azil's lieutenants. While the rest of us have been dithering about, he has single-handedly handed us the war. Well, just about. It was his brain that conceived the cannon that drained the dragons of their life force. It right. was him Which who... failed. A gov nods, indeed. But he did not stop there. He is the one that devised the plague that is starting to ravage your people. And he is the one that created me. Not to mention his golems, which I'm sure you've met. Oh, that reminds me. As I said, I hardly ever pay attention when we lieutenants have our little get-togethers, but if I do recall, he was planning something rather special involving his golems for you. Uh, it's anyone's guess as to what that is, but considering it's nigh, you can guarantee it will be nasty. Yeah, we're... Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> Finn looks Tell good. us more about this... Pl oh, sorry, sorry. No, you're good. Go, go, go. Tell us more about this plague that Nye cocked it up. Gav shrugs his shoulders. Tongue cocked it up. It is a plague. It wipes out people. I am not... I neither have the will or the patience to be as knowledgeable about such things as Nye. I can tell you that Azil was quite desperate before Nai brought that before him. Hmm. Well, you have no problem with me. I agree to destroy the phylactery. The likelihood of you luring us into a trap is pretty low. What with everything I've seen now. Consider it this way. I am in a win-win situation. Either you succeed mm -hmm. and I am free, or you fail and I look like I delivered you right into the throat of the enemy, because either way, into the throat of the enemy, you must go. Mm -hmm. But only one of those choices actually makes you free. Don't forget that, Gov. You might not I'm... lose, but that doesn't really mean it's a win. You I've still always... will be tormented and killed over and over and over again if we fail. Thank you, Wraith. I desperately needed someone to remind me of that. Lucky I for you. <laughs> <laughs> Lucky for you, I enjoy betting on the underdogs. So, you should probably know more about Whitebridge. Do you know what has become of it since, well, we arrived? Hey, hey, Finn's waving her hand. I have a question. I have a question real quick. Gav. It's been yes. raised for a bit. <laughs> yeah. 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 Yes. Hey, sorry. I'm not sure if that's how... Anyway, uh, you said that uh, Nye uh, created you. What did you mean by that exactly? Nye created my phylactery, which gave me this cursed immortality. So what were you before Nye got his greasy palms on you? Mortal. Wow. And did why did he do this, though? What, what reason? Just to have some sort of control over you? I am very talented in certain magical arts. You saw me attempting to do so with the troll demons. I am very useful to Azil. And Azil decided to let Nye test an experiment he had been working on, which, if worked, would assure that I served Azil for an eternity. Mm. Nye is very good at being successful in his experiments. Let's see. All right. Sorry, I was just curious about that part. Thank you for answering. And it's kind of nosy of me. Uh, what were you saying about Whitebridge? It has changed much since we arrived. I gather 
from your disguises, if you would call them that. Your intent was to sneak in and find a way to Azil. Well, now we'll find a way to Nye, but yeah, that's right. Then you should know what you're about to face. The stronghold, or the lands of Whitebridge, are no more. It is now a pit of rock and magma. It is very little the town you once knew it as. That does not mean it is not still a town in some ways. You will find all manner of demons and creatures of tiny, insignificant power and great. And like any society, there are rules. He looks at you again he says, you have chosen rather powerful forms. This is good. It means that you can walk among the streets not bothered by the lowest of demons. But it is also dangerous because you will draw the attention of your graders. Know that any demon that you feel you could destroy easily will obey your commands unless directly forbidden or told otherwise by their superiors. I am curious. The other two, what forms were you planning on Kidnapping, I guess, is the word? Killing is a better word. Yes. And Pearson gives a shrug. Killing. What forms would you like? Keen will look over to Jarek. Jarek looks over at Keen. Oh, isn't this really cute? Finn mm -hmm. looks at Pearson. <laughs> they, uh... Pearson looks at Finn. Pearson looks even longer at <laughs> oh god. <laughs> Jared, 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 Jared gives Keen a cruel smile. Well, I was thinking of either hijacking an imp or a uh, magic user of some fashion. I would imagine that Jarek would like to take over a wraith because or a wisp because he can animate the dead. Pearson asks Gov if you saw five six no five demons walk no uh, sky six demons walking around White Bridge. What sort of makeup or uh, gang uh, would not cause the most sus suspicion? Depends considering on considering we already have. It depends on who your master is. Do you work for Azil directly, the twins, Nye, Dementia, or me? Let's say you, since you know you the best. I tend to be very non-particular when it comes to who serves me. So I tend to have a very modeled crew, as you could no doubt tell by the variety of things you met here. And I guess it doesn't really matter what the others to, to choose, right? As long as we'll be under your service, so to speak. We won't raise any suspicions. True. Well, let's think about this. We have a toad. We have an orc, and he's going to point over to Sky. Or a troll, I mean. Um, we have two wisps. We have a demon dog thing. Barf. <laughs> Barf. Barf. Perhaps a couple of the spellcasters, like this one over here, and he's going to point to that body. And here I thought you guys were going to be interesting. I suppose if that's what you want, I can accommodate well, I... you. J I... Jarek actually like pipes up and says... If you're curious to see how this process works, I could try using it on you. Mm, nice. Gov looks... See, now that... 
That's interesting. That could be very interesting. If... Pearson raises a hand. <laughs> uh, yes, yes. <laughs> but you're unkillable. No. Apparently. I'm not unkillable. I just don't stay dead. Does it hurt? Ask your friend. The, which friend? Finn is like looking. He's looking at Pearson. Does it hurt? Pearson, oh, when you experienced all of those, they all felt like you were dying. Yeah. <laughs> Pearson just, just says, "Yeah." Oh, then why? I mean, like, I guess if you're cool with it, if you think it would be interesting, just you know, like that. <laughs> Just does not sound like a good time to me. <laughs> Derek says, I merely noted because of your curiosity with this guff and your unfamiliarity with what it is that we have done. I could try it on you, but I have no clue what it would do to you in your unique situation. True. Then let me tell you what that would mean in terms of your next step. Let's say you use this on me, and it works. It succeeds. If I was to travel the streets of Whitebridge with an entourage of demons, it, no one would look twice. Few lieutenants walk around alone, and very few indeed would bother to ask you what you were doing. Very few demons would ever confront a lieutenant. The only places you probably would not be allowed to walk in freely would be the strongholds of the other lieutenants. The only downside I can see is that you would draw a great deal of attention to yourself. Not that that's necessarily bad if these illusions are as powerful as you say. Jerick says... We're going to be attracting a great deal of attention in Whitebridge, one way or the other. Why not do it with a bit of style? Indeed, he says with a grin. That also opens up another interesting possibility. I could teleport you directly to my stronghold, and if one of you is, well, me, then my servants would treat you as such. My stronghold could then become a, oh, what would what would the term be, a refuge for you? You are rather a quirky sort as well, so if, even if one of us attempted to pretend to be you and failed, they would dismiss it as one of your quirks. My servants wouldn't bat an eye, even if I am being strange, they know better to question me. The lieutenants... Might be harder to convince, but look on the bright side. If they think that I am being too disagreeable, they'll just kill you. That's what they do to me. Jarek accepts that. And Jarek, no, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> <Pretty> reasonable, actually. <laughs> well, he, okay. he says, that would be interesting. Why don't we try it and see what happens first? Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Jarek says. Keen looks right. over to Jarek. Jarek will uh, set uh, his staff uh, along the uh, the column there, and uh, actually disrobe for this, <laughs> at least removing his robe, and uh, walk up slowly. Uh, he uh, he had like a great deal of reservation about uh, using these daggers to the extent that he was after like he had like images of like stabbing Keen with one and then like throwing <laughs> away like the rest of the daggers so that Jarek could still be Jarek because like hell he was gonna use like this witch king shit but then like this opportunity to like be like he was thinking about what if I just stab someone with them and then put the other dagger into them what does the feedback loop do I'd be fascinated you know it makes them even more themselves. <laughs> I know, like, Jared was curious, was gonna do that and say, you fucking people are stupid if you think I'm using these. <laughs> they would have given them to us. But now, but now, the worm has turned. But, but now Jared's like, huh, I like power. I like opportunity. <laughs> like, he's, like, nodding to himself, and, uh...
Uh, he will actually step up all the way, and uh, he will pull out both daggers, and uh, he'll go through an explanation process of how it works. As he rolled a 20 on that, he doesn't know exactly how they work. Mm-hmm. He does. Uh, Gob would listen, nodding. He'd say, interesting. Very well. And he will actually turn around and kneel down, and he'll say, In my considerable experience, I have found a blow to the back of the brain is the least pleasant way to go. Or most pleasant way to go. Oh, God. Uh, Jarek's mind, like, he, he, he actually says to himself, I love this man. Because he's <laughs> imagining, like, all the times he was, like, an interrogator for Call Haven. Like, I understand anatomy. I know how this works. Pearson <laughs> interjects. Oh, sorry, go ahead. No, no, go for it, Inferno. Pearson interjects and says, as the man who used to club a lot of people in the back of the head, I'd have to say the best way to go is to die in your sleep or in the middle of, you know, other business. Jarek, like, looks business? over at Pearson and says, well, I can't put him to sleep right now, and I think he does have experience on dying. Pearson makes the whole, you know, make a circle with one hand and put the finger in and out the circle with the other one. Yeah, yeah Gov, Gov actually, Gov actually looks, at, looks back at Jarek mischievously and says, we could try the other one, but I do have quite a bit of stamina. I, I have eight potions of sleep. <laughs> Just brain him, Pearson says. <laughs> brain him as he requested. <sighs> Fine. Just, like, <laughs> trying to make sure he doesn't. Jerick says, You don't understand. Him. He wants to experience what this might be like. Putting well, him to sleep, even if you did do it, would take that away from him. Hey, Cole, can I have your daggers? Jarek uh, <laughs> sighs, and then he allows all of that to wash from his brain. And uh, for a few moments there, uh, holding like both of the daggers, like tied together as they are, one in each hand, uh, like a skeletal hand gripping, uh, he flashes back to his time as a kid. He has like a look of horror across his face because this is a boundary he doesn't know is. And then he gets this look of like. Megalomaniac, like it's, it's a megalomaniacal, like look to his face, like the his lips slowly curl upward, and he starts imagining how awesome this is going to be, and <laughs> he takes it, like, exactly, like he narrows his eyes as he studies like Gov's head because it's not often that he socializes with the creatures of this particular type. All right, yeah, yeah, yeah. And he takes the skeletal hand, and uh, he uh, jerks the dagger forward. Roll to hit. <laughs> See how much damage you do out of his giant health form. But how dead? <laughs> well, uh, really just, cool, it's, it's, it's a coup de gras, so you don't have to roll to hit, you just roll critical damage, I suppose. <laughs> well, it might take me like 17 rounds to like... <laughs> <laughs> That's what I was thinking, of just like how repeatable do I stabs. <laughs> During this time, Pearson has to explain to Finn what the birds and the bees are. Finn, <laughs> Finn, seeing Pearson's hand gesture, is like, Pearson, what are you doing? <laughs> you, you, oh, this you would be great. If, <laughs> he if, says. If, 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 this is great. If, I'm imagining this before we continue. Like Jarek looks over at Pearson and extends the dagger, and just put this in for me. <laughs> Now imagine this is... Never mind, Finn, I'll tell you later. And now that he seems to have touched his breath, Pearson will happily oblige. No, 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 it was a joke. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Pearson slumps his shoulders a little bit and moves <laughs> off to the side. <laughs> and just stands there looking horribly confused and anyway, just decides to go over it. I know, like... Put it in for me since Pearson was going to go into an explanation of that. <laughs> sex, Finn. I was talking about sex. <laughs> he says, like, finally blurting it out. Oh, no more. All right. Like the gender. Finn just stares blankly oh. at Pearson. <laughs> just kill. Never mind. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever. All right. Let's, let's get back to the part where I said, God. 
Okay. Yeah, let's get back to the serious matters here. <laughs> Braining God, the demon lieutenant. <laughs> All right, so um, you stab him with the dagger into his brain, and his body convulses a few times and um, s- uh, stops moving, shimmering. Jarek looks down at uh, like the the other dagger he has, and he mumbles to himself, Lobo Bilana Fuel here, I thought I was going to get out of this. As <laughs> he like, turns the dagger and, like... Looks at his skeletal arm, looks at his like his human arm, shrugs and like stabs it into his human arm. <laughs> All right, uh, the same sensation as the others. You, you the your skin and clothes part with no blood, and you feel as if you've been stabbed by an icicle. A cold sensation starts to run through your entire body. Uh, do you break off the tip? Jarek will do so, and as he's doing so, he actually thinks to himself. I wonder how he's going to teleport us. I wonder how long it takes him to get back. You break off the tip, and the uh, the second you do and remove the dagger, Gob's body slumps forward to where, like, he's still in the kneeling position, but he's just, his face is just crashed into the ground. So it's rather unceremonious. Um, and your cold sensation continues to spread until you feel... Nothing. And Jarek, from your point of view, you still look as though you're Jarek. To everyone else, Jarek is now 11 feet tall and blue. With a with a, a muddled version of Jarek inside. Owie. Jarek uh, stretches and with the sickening like cracks of like bones as he like contorts his body. You know, I just thought of this. I don't know how long it takes him to get back. He might appear next to the phylactery that Nye has. Don't know about the teleportation idea. Now, it's like Jarek like leans down and like moves, like twists over the body of Gav to like something in a at least in a more comfortable looking position. I consider it. Pearson will say, well, considering he intended in completing his end of the bargain, I imagine that that body isn't going to go away. I bet you it's just going to rise back up after a period of time. There, Shin. Pearson says with a smirk. It is odd. I do believe that these, and he's going to kick the dead body of um, the, the troll behind him, do get back up without particular fires and things like that, but the one that she stabbed did not get back up. You hear a very deep, (laughs) raspy voice from across the hall. It's true. It did not get back up. I'll give it another hour, and then we should probably get moving. <laughs> Agreed. How you doing over there, Sky? You're looking pretty big and disgusting. That's good. Sky? If you could see my face right now. <laughs> uh... That's, all. That's all you get. We can, we can kind of see an outline of it, Sky. Sky, I mean, it's kind of funny. Like, you're this adorable, you know, elf creature, and now you're, like, the exact opposite. Let me, let me, let me put on my uh, cultured voice here. And Jarek uh, turns his head to look at Sky up and down, like, behind the trolls, and says, My darling Sky, I am so proud of you. Barf. You see the <laughs> troll... <laughs> Pick up a small stone on the floor and fling it at God. (laughs) (laughs) And then you hear, though, I wonder if my wings still work. And uh, you see two things happen. One, the muddled form of Sky in the center of the the demon troll. You see the white uh, muffled images of her wings unfurl. And she starts to flap them. 
However, you also see that the demon troll itself, trying to adapt to what's going on, spreads its arms out wide and starts to flap them. <laughs> and she takes a few feet off into the air, flapping her wings furiously, and it really looks like a large demon troll is flapping his arms and hovering <laughs> off the ground. Says, that looks splendid. Now, I do wonder what it would look like if you're trying to use your weapon while flying. <laughs> what? Why wouldn't my arms just use the weapons? Yes, but they're also devoted to the process of flying, right? What? How you would mean... the illusion interpret that? Um, Keen is going to pantomime what she is doing right now. Oh, for the love of... And then she just, like, lands back on the ground. And she says, I think maybe I will try to use flight sparingly then. Uh, well, you did actually pick a form that does not really have wings normally, so the illusion can't very well interpret it. That's why I was looking at possibly doing an imp. Can uh, can anyone okay. see my uh, quiver? Um, hang on. God, do I see his quiver? You see the muddled version of his quiver. Yeah, no, I can't. I mean, I can see it, but I don't think anyone else without the daggers would be able to. Hey, oh, you hey, I want to. I want to know what this looks like. Cole, check me, guys. Tell me what this looks like. <laughs> oh my God. Okay, Jared throw... blinks. <laughs> Cole, throw me. Cole, Cole. <laughs> Cole, um, he's well, going to put the daggers on the floor first, so he actually <laughs> sees without the muddled forms. Finn will give you a Cole, thumbs up, though. <laughs> Cole will scoop up towards the muddled image feet and do the general same thing that a gymnastic performance would do to Woo! toss the person up in the air and then back down. You guys see a toad demon with its very long, <laughs> sharp claws. Um hold his hand with the wraith hovering above it since a wraith is basically from the waist up a skeletal form with a blue aura around it it is hovering above his hand and he tosses and the wraith seems to fly forward <laughs> that's that awesome look, that, look, that look cool sorta Oh. Looked a bit strange, but yeah, it was kind of cool. Yeah. Well, I'll take it. Finn's hey, cool. Yes. Um. Why, why don't you Why don't you attack that that troll next to you with that horn? Your quiver. He'll look down at it. Shrug. <laughs> swivel his um. Quiver around and plant it firmly on top of the, the troll. It looks to everyone else as if the um, toad demon grasps nothing in between its two hands and slams it down on the troll. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, a, a few inconsistencies. That's that's all right. We, we can, can work, work with that. that. Yeah. Well, if we actually get into a situation where we must fight, we're looking for no survivors, so it's not as if it really matters how the illusion attempts to interpret what it is we're doing. Very true. Does anybody have an axe? Um, two-handed or one-handed? Two. Unfortunately, no. I have a great sword. If you want that. I suppose that should work. Keen will unbuckle his great sword and hand it over to Cole. Um, Cole will grasp it in one hand and um, pierce it into the the demon. Uh, the d demon troll. Yeah. Yes, it is a mix of a troll and a demon. Yes. Got it. How does that look? <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, say that one more time. He's He has a great sword, and he's mm -hmm. currently planting it into the um, the demon, the troll demon. It looks as though, um, it's not it's not as bad as with the, the, the horn, because the, the, the sword is bigger. 
The illusion tries to match what you're doing. It looks as if the... Uh, it's kind of strange. It looks as if the, 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 the toad troll has stuck its arm out and down and stabbed the thing with its claws. So it looks like it's daintily stabbing the troll. Eh. <laughs> <laughs> because yeah, the can... illusion is trying to wrap one arm around your arm and the downward angle of the sword. Cole spins the sword around. <laughs> the arm does a weird disjointed <laughs> spin. It's like a plain WWE trick. <laughs> yeah, yeah, the arm glitches Jesus. out. I know. Oh my you know, god. Eric, uh, picking up a staff and looking back says, uh, Well, uh, we might be here a bit, so uh, Finn, why don't you uh, take a look around? There might have been something shiny here, perhaps a uh, a sapphire, a ruby, an emerald. We don't know how long we're waiting. Ooh, you sapphire. hear your sky's voice. Why are you doing? Why is he doing that? <laughs> I but think he's can... pretending to be Gov. Yeah, trying to get yeah. into character. He's trying to be pretentious, which he doesn't have to. If you, know, you try very simpletons hard. actually do pay attention, yep. Sky has a very deep voice, so it's not a matter of pretending. 